Good evening guys. Right, we're going to move on to where we left this uh, uh, Hoojum What's It mess. <laughs> this Xbox One, if you remember, oh, I think I picked it up on the end of the last video. Uh, which basically, one switch on when it's cold, basically. Yeah, simple as that. So, what I've done since we last looked is, uh, as you can see, I have stripped it down. Uh, I'm using a modified heat sink that uh, I've altered, which I use quite a lot for Xbox work because you can turn it round so it doesn't cover the, um, the FET basically. And I'll try and show you a bit more uh, if I can. It was just a case of machining and a bit of the uh, heat sink out so that um, I can actually get into the uh, yeah, there we go, you see that. So it exposes all the uh, all the facts. And uh, what else have we done? Oh yeah, I tell you what I did do. I hooked up. We was talking about the uh, the fans um, various things yesterday. And I have hooked up the scope to the fans, so I can show you the uh, the signals that uh, are on the fan. Basically, you've got your plus and minus, be it whatever the voltage doesn't matter, whatever the fan runs at. And you've got a taco which comes back from the fan, and you've got a PWM signal which goes into the fan. And uh, basically, what uh, the, this, the actual PWM, the, the signal itself is controlled, it's pulse width modulation uh, to change the speed of the van, uh, the fan, not the van. And I'll, uh, I'll show you that in a moment. So, what we'll do, we're just going to set up a very cool, I, I can't, this is a bit awkward because I can't actually get right on top of the scope uh, I've been trying to set up some software so that um, I can um, how can I do this oh that might work it's a bit crude but it's have a look so I can actually uh, filter it straight through right this is pit poor forgive the quality Right, the yellow is the signal coming from the, um, that'd be, uh, from the, it could be either, I'm not sure on the one, I'm pretty sure it's either directly from the CPU, which, or it could be via the south bridge, but what we've got, that is running at quite a high frequency, if I take the time base up on the scope a bit, you'll see it, there it is there. Uh, as you can see, it's the low signal, or the square wave at the bottom, is bigger than it is at the top. Um, and what happens is, the this is basically what they call mark space ratio, and depending on the period, which is the time of the on and off, is to how fast the fan will run. Um, at the moment, the off period. Is longer than the on period so the fan isn't running at half a leather it's running at just a comfortable speed depending what the CPU is if I hate the CPU up that fan that, that uh, yellow waveform would change shape uh, as in the the upper uh, portion of the signal will get bigger and the lower one will get smaller and what it does, it uh, it will change its mark space ratio to speed up or slow the fan down. Uh, it knows when it's done it because the signal that comes back from the fan is like a taco. And that's on the blue. Now that's at a lot of different rates on a slower clock. So if I slow this down. Right, there you can see the blue. Now if I drag the fan down and slow it down, you'll see that this will change. There you go, you can see that. Now, what that is doing in reality uh, is telling the CPU that the fan's running a lot slower than it was. Um, if I could actually synchronize both waveforms, what would happen is I slowed it down, the yellow waveform would have changed to try and speed it back up. That's 
basically just what I was saying about uh, yesterday about PWM. It's a little bit more complex, but I think that's good enough. I'm pretty sure you'll follow that. Um, right now, let's go back to this board. Now, let's see if we can get in a bit closer. This is a bit difficult because uh, of trying to work around and see what I'm doing. Now, if I can bring this down a bit without trapping on my fingers and everything, I don't think the camera will come down any closer than that. But, okay. Perhaps actually it'd be better if it's on I think I'll get a bit more perspective of what's going on from that one. Uh, it's a bit flooded with light now, isn't it? Just get it out of the light a bit. Uh, right, okay. What I did find, um, I f did freeze the, uh, the CPU, APU, sorry, and it didn't make a lot of difference. So uh, it evidently wasn't that. Um, but what I did find, now I think you'll probably be able to see this. Um, as soon as I freeze the, the culprit, it will stop. And two things happen immediately, is the white light will go out, and also you'll notice the, uh, the yellow signal from the scope will disappear. Because that's the one that's coming from, I think, from the CPU, or the, um, it's got to be come from the CPU, I think, on this one. Unless there's a separate signal uh, going to the south bridge, monitoring the uh, CPU temperature, and it could be coming from the south bridge, as it does on the S. What we'll try and do is try and patch the scope through onto the same camera. Uh, I can, I know it can be done, I'm just not very clever, so just bear with me. Um, I'll see if I can't uh, do something. Okay, our oh, layers, that sounds about right. So we want to stick, the trouble is when I try this before, um, it wouldn't let me resize the image I wanted to put into the picture because it just made a blooming mess. Um, right, so camera two. Bryo, Logitech Bryo. Um, Logitech Bryo, okay. Right, oh uh, yeah, that's neat. Now, can I actually. I can't move it on there. Now, how the heck did we do this? Um, I know I can do it, I just can't remember how. Is it. This one. Ah. Right, okay. Ah, uh, right, well, let me actually move. It's only let me move diagonally. Uh, okay, let's have a play with some of these buttons. Without doing anything. Oh, okay. Ah, not bad. Alright, so we'll leave the scope up. Uh, the only problem is the scope is actually upside down. Um, so not to worry i will resolve all these issues right what we're going to do now is go and slap some freezy cold stuff on and see if we can find where it is um i've got a sneaky suspicion it's possibly the chip the controller down here so here we go there you go off she went no problem at all so you notice the scope go off and the fans now slowing down There we go. Now, as, uh, as I did freeze it, we'll now warm her up and see if she wakes up again. I'm not sure what the chip is at the moment. Um, I could have a look at it. As I say, I've only just done this. Well, there we go, with some temperature. I've just turned it on, it hasn't come on because the scope didn't come on as you see. Oh, there she goes. Point made. So we found the fault. And as I say, two, two things there. I mean, obviously uh, the LED went out 
um, but it was nice to see the, um, the actual signal uh, disappear as well. I'm pretty certain that that chip is basically similar to the one on the S that controls the, uh, the rails that um, fire I2C that come out the APU and it monitors the current from the APU and the south bridge and basically if there's an error or an over voltage or anything else hasn't sort of started up when it should so in other words all its little uh, inputs uh, are not in place it will shut it down and that's basically exactly what it does so there we go um, I can't actually change the chip at the moment because I haven't got one. Um, I'm going to have to I'll tell you what we could do. We will have a look to see what it is. Let me just uh, have a bit of a rearrangement here because I'm going to have to drag the stroke over and hopefully not knock cables out everywhere. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get in here without knocking all the scope leads out. Um, no, I'm going to have to take the scope leads out, so just a moment. Oh, the scope's off. Right, that's out of the way. Now we're going to have a peek a boot and see what this bloody thing is. It, uh, it could be the same as the S, to be honest. It's an on shot, it's uh, on semi, on. And the only problem is. I can't actually read it because the, the light. Let me just shut some of the overhead light off for a minute. Sorry if it's getting a bit dark. Right, now let's have a look. I'm about to change the lighting on the camera. I'll tell you what, I'll stick the scope on actually. Uh, right, so I'm well, now going to play with the, the new puts on the. Uh, well, let's, uh, let's come up with it. I got a feeling. Right, okay. If all else fails, an LED torch uh, will prevail the show all. Hang on, I can't find the torch. How about that? It was here. Oh, dear, oh dear. Where's that gone? There it is. Well, it's a good job I looked down there. I've just found that uh, LCD thing for. Right, okay, let's have another look. Right, move a bit of light around on it, can we see it? There it is. NCP4204. That's uh, the same, isn't it? I believe. NCP4204. NCP okay, I'll have a look. Um, but on, but um, I'm going to write this down. My short term memory is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I've forgotten what it was. NCP4204? Oh, I'll have to look again. <sighs> 4204. Better check, because I'm probably wrong. Ah. Do -do 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 -do. Yeah, I can't see it now again. It just wants slightly tilted at an angle to see it, but I can't exactly move it because everything's sort of perched in place on the uh, the board. Let me just uh, find my super duper torch again. I can't believe I forgot what that said already. Uh, there we go. Yeah, for NCP 4204. See the difference? I don't know if you can see it. It's something to do with the, the material they um, make the uh, chips with. It's almost got like a, uh, a glass in it, but it's not pure glass because it chucks all the light back up at us. Uh, scope's, uh, scope's off because I've unplugged it. Okay, where's the other one? That one? Let's throw it out one. Okay, let's drag that out of the way. Um, okay, 
Well, that's about as far as I can go at the moment because I actually haven't got a chip, but uh, I'm more than happy that that's the problem. As I say, I have tried it about three or four times. Um, so, don't know you'd ever see that fall again. It's the first time I've come across uh, one of those chips being thermally unstable. But, um, as I say, uh, it does give uh, a beep on beep off um, when it's cold. So, it's never a bad thing to, if you get a beep on beep off, it's just to run over the um, the uh, SMC and the, the rail, the um, memory rail, with a, um, a warm... Uh, don't boil it because you kill it. You, you just want to take, you know, take temperature up to about 35, 40 degree, 50, somewhere around there. Um, I've just noticed the what on earth is my floor cam looking at? <laughs> Something that was warm. Ah, oh, it's the power supply for the uh, the one there. Yeah, it's very warm. Let's see what it is. As I say, these are quite easy to repair, the, uh, the ones. I will uh, do a repair video on them because they are reasonably easy and quite safe. Well, sort of. Uh, is that on? Oh, I've just missed it, have I? Okay, let's move it a bit more. Come as soon as I let go. There we go. 38.5. Yeah, I'll say it feels reasonably warm to touch. But um, there you go. I will show you what I did with that heatsink actually, because uh, I'm going to have to pull this apart. So we'll just go back to the board for a moment. I was going to stream live, but um, I've just had guests around and they've just left. Um, oh, I haven't had any dinner. And Wayne was on, I think. I'm not sure if he's live or not, but I didn't want to tread on any toes, so uh, I thought I'd record this one. Uh, okay, so we'll shut down. The old, uh, there we go, off. Oh, I have the wrong button. What did I hit? Oh, I'll turn the controller off. There we go, try that one. There we go. I still can't find that ribbon for this front panel. <laughs> <laughs> I've got 10 of them somewhere in this room and I can't find them. It's absolutely ludicrous. Right, okay, well, we'll just add all these out. Uh, I'll show you what I do with the heat sinks. It's handy because it gives you access to all the bits and pieces you need to have access to. Um, and this, the, the, the heat sink I modified is the is the Xbox One with the uh, heat pipes, but it does fit the S as well. You just make sure when you do it that you, when you put it on, um, I've only sat the heat sink out uh, the fan on top, so I'm just gonna rip that off as well. There we go. Right, as you can see, it's around the wrong way. Um, what I'll try and show you. Um, I'm not sure which camera, probably, okay, let me go over to uh, the Bryo, um, if I can find it, uh, it's probably that one, I'll just take the scope out of the picture, um, goodbye, thank you, you're welcome. I think the madness is, uh, it's uh, catching up with me. Right. Now uh, you can see, well, sort of, uh, I, I tried, well, I say machined it out. It was a bit, bit uh, um, more like a miniature grinding disc. Unfortunately, I did try and machine it, but the, the things are too thin. All I did was try it, it virtually tore them off. And that's the baby there that's giving us the grief, this one. So, there we go. Um, in fact, I think I'll probably leave the heatsink on until I've changed the chip because I don't really want to upset the, uh, the compound. Um, the other thing I do tend to do is when I put the clip on the bottom, 
I uh, have a tendency just to put a couple of screws in just in case because I've had one twang off not that the heatsink was a problem but the clip uh, shorted out the board and that, that was the end of it um, I normally what I have got is I've uh, got some little springs that go on um, so I don't normally use the star uh, I've got a wash and some springs and some little thumb screws for the life of me they're probably where the ribbons are because I can't find them which is great but um, the only thing with this chip, I would say that, it is possible it could be a component around the chip, which in all fairness is possible, but unlikely. Um, I don't know, let's have a look what we've got around it. Uh, it's not a great deal really, I mean most capacity, caps very very rarely go um, conscious with uh, the temperature, especially to the point where it will shut the thing down, but it is, it is possible, but it's a lot easier to change the chip than change all the components around it. Um, and the other thing is, it's awkward to try and heat up just one little area. This is why I stripped it out so I can get close to it with the freezer. Um, the freezer is pretty, pretty directive, so uh, you can actually get to the point onto the chip with the nozzle and you can actually just freeze it. In fact, I did earlier on, I just put some um, masking tape around it so that the freezer didn't go onto the anything else um none of the moisture did as well um, it's still shut down so there we go all right i might hope that was of some interest um well if you've got anything you want us to explain um i mean you probably know most of it anyway but if there's anything i can do to help please please ask um or if there's anything um how what was it I was uh i have um got a demonstration i can sort out and that's to explain how joysticks work and show the signals um they basically use um a reference voltage from the processor in the hand unit which is uh, 1.8 volt which goes to the top of all the pots the bottom of all four uh, both all four pots go to ground and then the wipers um, go to separate channels on the input and um, basically what that is that input voltage is taken from the 1.8 uh, reference voltage which comes out the chip so because it's it's very accurate and then the four wipers off the um, joysticks which is the bit of the resistor that moves and changes value uh, goes into a D to A uh, sorry an A to D input so what it does it then changes the analog voltage into a digital signal and that's basically how it works but if you want me to scope it up and do a little drawing and show you what the waveforms look like if you've any interest just say i'll do it okay right short one tonight guys thanks very much and take care and good night